Oh, hi. This week, we're going to make our own DIY cheap whatever we have on hand interpretation of Hermione Granger's little drawstring bag that she carries around through places such as the Forest of Dean and, you know, pretty much everywhere else on the planet. So here's what you need. I'm just using whatever purple fabric I had laying around, which is pretty thick. It's not very stretchy. If you have flimsier material, you might want to get a lining for this. If you didn't see the weirdness that ensued this past Wednesday, this is like an actual tutorial for that kind of project. And I did mention in that, if you happen to watch it, a bandana that you were cutting up would be a perfect use of fabric. And this is almost bandana size. Like I wouldn't say it's much bigger than a bandana. I'm just going to cut off the excess here while I explain the other stuff you're going to need. Also necessary for this is some kind of string. I had this black ribbon laying around and that's gonna match the fabric, but I used really cheap shitty yarn for the last one. So anything you have laying around should be fine. So I'm gonna fold this a bunch of ways. You can draw a more exact circle if you want. Use a protractor if you feel so inclined. I'm going to fold it into a triangle twice and then just keep folding it into tinier triangles. That's going to be good enough. Again, the shape isn't going to be so important because this is going to get cinched up. As long as you're close, cool, cool. Because I'm just working with what I have, this is the shortest edge. I'm just going to cut a rounded edge. Oh man, and my new scissors are cutting through all of this. That is 16 layers of canvas. That was not very good. Ooh, don't do that shape. All right, well, the bag's gonna be a little smaller then. I think I curved it too hard. So don't curve it as much as I just did. Yeah, that's better. So as you unfold it, it should just keep a rounded edge. And hey, look at that, we have a circle, magic. All right, I didn't list like any other shit you need. Uh, sewing machine with matching thread, definitely some scissors. After some very hurried brainstorming, I did decide I'm gonna do a lining. I just found this fucking awful jacket I used to wear for work when I had to dress up business casual. Again, if you haven't been watching my recent videos, now that I have the new best job at a costume shop, I don't have to wear business casual shit and it's kind of the best. I'm just gonna lay this jacket out. It sucks for anything other than what I'm about to use it for. I'm gonna lay my circle I've already cut on top of here. Oh, you can't even see what I'm doing. I'm basically using this as my pattern to cut out the lining piece. And I'm not worrying about seams or anything like that. Can you even call it a jacket? Yesterday was April 25th, so it's good for that weather. Fuck you, jacket. All right, so I'm gonna lay this right side up and lay this right side down. Actually, because the lining is bigger, I should do it that way. Also, I did not lay that right side up. Um, I'm gonna put like one or two pins in here. Now I'm just gonna sew around the edge, just a regular straight stitch, maybe like a quarter inch in. Yeah. Oops, Uh, remember how I said do a straight stitch? I had it on a zigzag, so let's not do that. And I have no stitch length, so let's do that too. Oh, an important thing, leave a gap somewhere on here just so you can flip everything back out the way it needs to be. You know, I like how this is feeling more now that I have this second fabric in here. It's just gonna look nicer. And we didn't have to hem a fucking curved edge because that's the worst. Do a row of top stitching everywhere but this opening. Normally, when you flip something out like this, you would sew this shut and then go about your business because we're putting a casing in I want to leave a gap here. Yeah. And now I don't need to iron this because that kind of pressed everything down nice and flat on the edge. Beautiful. This is going exactly to plan. So I'm going to do another row of stitching and that's going to make the casing. I'm not going to make it as wide as this ribbon. I don't care if this gets rolled up inside because it's all going to get cinched up real tight. But if you have something that's wide and flat and you want to keep it the same width, you go right ahead and do it further in. I just want to keep the bag as big as I can. So for this, I am going to stitch all the way around, but about half an inch in or something. Yeah, let's go half an inch. But again, it's going to depend on what you're using and how big your circle is. Oh, I'm so excited. This is coming together. Now you can either take a safety pin or if you have one of these things like I have. Oh, is this going to be big enough to fit this in the channel? Ah, fuck. You dummy. Safety pin it is, I guess. This is my plan all along to show you the fancy shit doesn't always work. Oh, these are tiny safety pins. It's still gonna work, but I do wish I had a bigger one that would make this go faster. So I'm just pinning this through. So you're just gonna pull the safety pin. You can kind of feel it as you're going through. And that's gonna drag the ribbon. All right, so I see my safety pin on the other end. 10 days later, this is already starting to cinch itself just for me pulling it and not straightening it up the whole time. But you see, does it make sense now what I was going for? All right, now I'm just gonna pull much ribbon as I want through here and take the safety pin out. I'm going to put 
a knot in this. We're so close to being done. Oh my God, which is good because I have to go to work soon. All right, so I got my two ends out of here. Now I'm gonna leave the littlest space for the ribbon over here where I ended the top stitching and then, you know, fold the edges in and top stitch like you would if you were closing up a regular gap that you left to turn something out. Again, when I get to this edge, I'm going to leave the littlest gap just so this can still move. Do not stitch the ribbon. It's very important. I'm telling you and myself as I go to sew this close. All right, that was the last step other than trimming up these threads. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Probably easier to show you on this side of the fabric. Now that it's done, I just left open a couple stitches where the ribbon is coming out. So now you can cinch your bag. Now I have a cute little drawstring bag. And it's okay if it looks smaller than you intended because that was kind of the whole point of Hermione hiding all the stuff in there. No one would suspect that there was a fucking tent inside of her purse. I think maybe I'm actually going to send this to my mail time perk buds that donate to my Patreon because they're the bestest. And I like how this came out and maybe you'll like this, Amanda. I know casings can get confusing and everything, so hopefully the past two videos have helped you on your path to making terrible tiny shitty bags. <laughs> Speaking of some of my patrons, I would like to do a couple shout outs such as Team Family Awesome. You guys are just continue to be the best. Thank you. Thank you. I love you so much. Ew, I said it out loud. Jeanette, I appreciate you always being here. I hope you've been enjoying the content. Robzar, I'm glad your house is coming together. It looks like it's been quite a road for you guys, but cheers. The Amber, always thank you for putting out such cool stuff like your zine and just your general tweets make me very happy. Sarah aka Mara Jade also thanks to you for making dope stuff all the time. Anyone that doesn't know I'm gonna link to her Patreon because she does really cool stuff. If you would like to check out my Patreon I'll put a link to that up here somewhere and then you can sign up for mail perks and you can have me send you stuff in the mail. It's great. If you would like to see whatever weirdness happens next weekend you can go ahead and subscribe up 